Support for this podcast comes from the patrons at patreon.com slash FML FPL. Be on. Thursday early evening pod. Yeah, you know, midweek, different schedule. What are we going to do here? The midweek is That's so more, fucking uh, annoying, man. Yeah, it's fun when it creeps up on you. And then also it's for us right in the middle of the day. So it's hard to catch everything with work yeah. and stuff. And it's I didn't easy even over there. It's in the evening for them. But. Yeah, I couldn't even watch, you know, highlights for half the games or something. So we'll see. It's going to be a raw episode, but you know, the the next game week is there's one day off until the next game week. So yeah, we just got to bang it out. Um, you know, there's no cup draws because the site isn't updated yet. There's no <laughs> mug league shit because the site isn't updated yet and all that. But uh, you're off to a very nice start with your wildcard team. So why easy. don't you? It's a fucking easy game for Team easy. Walsh. So why don't we? Why don't you tell the people about your team? Because this was a final day. Like, here's my team. Talk to you later. Wildcard situation. Yeah. Um. So I finished on seventy one. Um. I actually didn't make that many changes. Um. I changed. Yeah one midfielder and one forward kind of and then I changed four of my five defenders right um, and one of your keepers yeah so I went with Raya and Vicario yeah tell me about that this is the most you've ever spent on keeper the position yeah yeah well I mean I don't need money since I'm not going to have Holland um, and you know Vicario was really just a nod to have like those late doubles yeah, um, where they should it was have either two him, doubles or something. Yeah, yeah, it was either him or Chelsea, and I couldn't bring myself to get a Chelsea <laughs> defender. Um, Which looks you know, good. Vicar- <laughs> yeah, they are ridiculous, but Spur- you know, Vicario makes saves, and you know, maybe he's just going to have four fixtures in two game weeks, like in the last three game weeks yeah. or whatever. So those are just two good. I'm happy to just pay for those two starts, basically. Yeah. Um, and then Raya, you know, he just stayed because I spent time, obviously, as you would imagine, looking at all the keepers and <laughs> they're just so bad, you know? Yeah. And I ended up going with triple Arsenal defense. I have Gabrielle and White. And then I put Ruban and Gvardi all in. So my kind of idea was like I would rotate them a little bit because mm-hmm. I was sort of bearish on the Arsenal fixtures from the clean clean sheet standpoint. And also it felt like it would be nice to just back into having a free, in air quotes, share with Raya um, in some of those tougher fixtures. Because I'm sure they'll keep one or two in some of these tricky fixtures and I could just kind of luck, luck into just a little cheeky clean, yeah. you know? Um, but I mean, like the it, city... This week continues the season of just no cleans. I mean... Everyone who's starting under two Arsenal guys must just be thinking every single week. They must just be like, what the fuck am I actually doing here when no one else gets cleans or points? It's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that was that came in, obviously. And, you know, my idea was to kind of bench White and Gabrielle for the next two and start my two city. And then it's the double for Arsenal. So I'm kind of planning a little bit of back and forth there, but we'll see how it goes. Good problem. Good to have extra good guys on the bench there anyway. And then um, I I went with eight Nori, you know, I mean, they conceded obviously, and he scored like a center backs goal. Um, they were terrible. And, you know, he, I somehow got no bonus points in a one, one, like very, <laughs> very, Hard to do that. Yeah. When the defender scores a goal. Yeah. What but the fuck you know, happened in that game? What the hell? I, I don't know. I mean, he just like gets dispossessed. He's basically not playing defense, so he's not getting any CBI. He so was. I mean, he's just he so was bad. playing winger. To be fair, like that yeah. game was not. Yeah. 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 And uh, but I mean, eight obviously great. Um, and yeah, I mean, not having Saka was huge. You know, just not in the squad. And then you know, No Holland was huge. Obviously, I have Kevin. So one one giveth, one taketh. <laughs> yeah. And then I went triple Liverpool attack. You know, I mean, it's you got Darwin two scored the yeah Darwin scored the worldie today. <laughs> Dodged Mo with the point. Yeah, Captain Darwin. So I got a few that extra was big points for you there. This week. Yeah, that was big. Yeah, yeah and then like really you know, good Palmer. start for you. You're up 
60 to 70 K when it all settles so, somewhere around there. So really nice start for you. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's all, it was, it's like, I'm happy with the team. I feel like I'm in good shape and now I can just kind of save this week easily and just, you know, do little things here and there. So yeah, it should, should be a pretty relaxing finish to the season. Yeah, I am I've, glad I wild carded. I have absolutely no interest in, you know, a bonus chat as I know that you also do, but just looking up eight in order to figure out what went down in that game. One of the worst things about bonus is the big chance missed huge yeah. negative. He gets a minus three in his yeah. BPS because he missed one big chance where he didn't like sail it over the crossbar or something. I think it was just saved, right? I mean, it's good. Yeah. Like all the best players in the world get the most big chances missed. <laughs> and he yeah, just it should gets... be getting a big chance is two or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that would balance yeah. it out. And he, if he didn't get that minus three, he would have been on two baps. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah. that. that's the difference right there. It's just so fucking yeah. stupid. And it was also, because I was... I don't know. I was like doing other stuff and I saw the game finish. I was like, oh, it's amazing. He's going to get like 10 or 11 points. And I check, he's just like not on bonus. I was <laughs> yes. like, v- Vitinho, who did nothing, gets two bonus. I'm like, hmm, okay. Like that's Vitinho, cool. Vitinho, who's like, <laughs> he's in a pool of guys that's honestly not very large considering the amount of matches we watch where you could have told me he's on like six to seven other teams that haven't been like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, I, I missed that transfer. He's subbing on for NFO. Oh, yeah, like if someone was like, yeah, Bur- no, Burnley Vitino, not Wolves Vitino, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even know. That that makes sense, though, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So how about you over there? 49. Once I got the auto subs, it'll be 53. Once you take the minus eight, it's down to 45. A lot of yeah. complicated math there. Yeah. Um, big... <laughs> Big red, but not catastrophic. I mean, I'll be down around as much as you went up, like down 60 or 70K, it looks like, once it settles. You know, obviously, Captain Mo is kind of a wash. I mean, almost everyone Captain Mo. And then it was funny when you look at the stats, it's like the other two guys who are like 2% capped were Holland and Sokka. So, like, sure. it bumps it up to even like more people cap Mo because yeah. everyone fights them. Um, but we all obviously should have been on Palmer. I mean, Ridiculous, another 20 pointer for Palm Man. But yeah, I mean, double clean Arsenal got the Darwin goal. My minus eight obviously didn't come off because Holland was the big centerpiece of it all and he played zero minutes. Um, so that's not ideal. But in the end, it was only a minus three because of the Darwin goal and, you know, Anderson three pointers, not the end of the world coming in off the auto sub there. Um, it's just frustrating because. My original plans were just a minus four, just Holland in and Matto down. And I was looking at all the mids and I just didn't feel that confident with, I mean, I, I DM'd you about it. It was like, the list was like BJ, Eze, Rodri, McAllister, Barnes, something like that. It, it was a kind of like cheap pool of mids and all of them, I was like, ah, I'm not sure. And I think like five for five return. Oh no, as a as a goal got ruled out, but like four out of the five returned, and like two out of the five got double digit hauls, and I'm just like fuck, dude. Yeah. And so I ended up making the way worse move, at least for now, with Darwin. But we'll see how it plays out over the next like you know four or five or more game weeks. Um, yeah, but you know, fine, kind of just like a low scoring bad week, but not not catastrophic for me. So you know, is what it is. My team's good. Classic Walsh line after a huge red. My team is sick. <laughs> I like the stock. <laughs> I like the stock. We hold we hold the stock. And um, regs came in for you. You get more I got a plus unlocking one. more quests. You just yeah. keep getting regs. He yeah. never disappoints. Just keeps Can't coming bury in. him deep enough. He always <laughs> pops his head cannot. up. Cannot. <laughs> he's in your. If he's in the fifteen, he finds his way into the eleven. That's he's how regs operate. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This guy. You're gonna start him home, Chef You, and he's gonna get negative points. Where? When is he even? When is that? Thirty-three. Oh yeah, you're he's fucked. In, he's definitely starting yeah, from you're, here. You're fucked. Anthony Robinson, who saves my free hit, my non-free hit, twenty nineteen with the eleven pointer, back to back concede three goals to Sheffield United in NFO. See, like that's I was thinking about that. Like, so funny. It's so the ordering is so. Like not how you planned it. And also, if you said 
if I told you you're going to get 13 points from these three games, you'd be like, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, four, like, that's they, two uh, four point two or 4.3 points per game. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. That's, that's how good, that's how much good players return. Yeah. Um, Except for a defender too. It's, you know, but also if you feels... told me that I would have been like, I kind of expect that with a way chef you away on Sure. Like if you told me that ahead and said predict the points, I would have said I'm hoping he gets two points for Spurs, and then he makes up the others with like a clean and some bonus and maybe assist in in the other one. Yeah, but obviously which, the way it came is just it's just yeah, so silly. Which more I think was probably a lack of astute analysis of their away form. Period. Yeah, they're so bad it's, away. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean it's in the case all season for Fulham and yeah. also. Partly that part of that goes into well they didn't play Sheffield and NFO away yet so right exactly. it's gonna turn like they exactly. can't be this and then no actually they are and you're like whoa it's conceded crazy. six against two of the worst teams in the league and yeah they have eleven points go. which is tied for tied with Newcastle for third worst away from home yeah this yeah, season yeah. I mean the post mortem will be a lot of home versus away stuff I think I'm just just thinking out loud like there's. There's team examples like Newcastle, like Fulham, probably others. I Liverpool, honestly. But then there's also just like the Gordon, the Doug Louise. There's random players who's just like every fucking home game, they're just flying. And there was probably some genius in the world who's just rotating for the homes and it's just and it's just doing it all. But it's not us. Yeah. The hard thing about rotating is though that you can only rotate one spot. <laughs> Yeah. Unless if you're just looking at some massive defense, like two defender spot overhaul. Old school, old school yeah. FPL. Like you have you have a, a five, five guys, and yeah. three four fives and one four zero oh or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is you know, no there one does is that probably anymore. something to that though. If you can literally put a lot of defensive weight on the home fixture, I mean, if you disregard the expensive picks, like you know, Arsenal next year are going to be six million all the defenders and shit like that. You know, maybe that's maybe that's something. But yeah, we'll I mean the other less, the, the other like miniature lesson is it, it's a thing we know, but it's worth remembering, right? It's like you got Ignori, I got the Anthony Robinson Hall. Forget about when it came. It's just getting the guys with attacking intent and potential bones for that reason pays off because if you're if you're starting them for a stretch of time, like you with Ignori and me with Anthony Robinson here. Whenever the clean does come, they might fucking haul ass, or they might yep. just get an attack return in a game where they don't clean. Yeah, and that's what you're that that keeps them afloat way more than like because I could have just had a fucking center back and sure. I'd be on a well on a lot less points. Yeah, um, yeah, I ain't Nori genius. Yeah, right. and I great, will also great make pick. great pick. an aside comment watching the Bournemouth game without having any of their attackers. Incredible, fantastic, feeling. felt unbelievable. You mean the Absolutely Palace game? Incredible. Well, you know, let's go. Sure. <laughs> there was a uh, incredible Glasner quote that I saw. Oh when God, I, was, I didn't uh, see this. What, the things. what did he come up with? Our uh, he German, said, our new German if you, uh, if you, Matt if Overlord. If, it was something along the lines of, "If you don't score, you won't win." <sighs> Or can't win. It was something, something like big, it was just. Look at the it big was brain on Brad. If you don't score a goal, you can't win. That's what he said. It's fucking true. I and give him the keys, dude. <laughs> let's yes, let's go. Oh, he yeah, has him, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I mean, NFL, yeah, it was. Oh, we play goals. four at the back. I think like the first time since he arrived. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I don't know what we were up no, to. No, Richard, you we can't. Have, you can't win. No, you can't win without Richard. We just have so many bad players. It's just astonishing. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Yeah, but I don't think we need to talk about Palace too much. So what do you? No. What's, what do we got today? What do we? Yeah, what do we have today? today is really the question. I mean, I, maybe let's just start with captain because I think for thirty two it's pretty interesting. Um, sure. X fifty said, "Is Phil a cap shout?" Jeff D said, "Do we cap Mo versus Banter United or stupid slim sexy gold boot contender Cold Palmer?" Yep. Um, I'm on Palmer at the moment. He's away, Chef U. Yep. I think you can make a case for like six different players this week, and and they're pretty of, reasonable. Yeah, a lot of options this week. Um, yeah. I mean, there's the Spurs are home, NFO, Chelsea away, Chef U, Liverpool away, Man United, 
Arsenal away. Brighton is probably a, a, a skip for me, but some people I'm sure will go there. Um, City at Palace, early game. So like, I think it's Holland by a lot this week. Okay. go yeah. Tell me why. Why over Palmer? What do you think? Well, Rested. Chef United at home, when they're just going to park their lives away and barely move after they have a two-day off kind of thing where you never know what Chelsea are going to really be capable of on any given day, no matter how much rest they have. Yeah. I just feel like that is a sketchy game. Um, I'm just a little, I'm just concerned about it. Like Chel- capping Chelsea, it's almost very similar to me of like capping like Sun, where it's just, I the fixture like doesn't matter. They can just play badly, very capably any given day, any, right. every, any day of the week. Versus right. like with City, they're going to destroy us. And Holland just didn't play for one second. So he's going to be very rested and start. And they're going to rotate a few spots and be fit and good. And we're going to have to be stuck, you know, playing the same 11 who just ran a lot against Bournemouth. And we're going to get fucking destroyed. So yeah. I feel like I have more confidence in the way that game's going to go. Um so that makes sense I, to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm on Kevin, uh, obviously. Well, I was about to say, so you're on Kev. But yeah, I think that's easy. It makes sense to me. And that's kind of enough for me to just go Holland. I guess I have this like nagging fear in the back of my head based on how Liverpool played today, Arsenal played yesterday. Of just like, are these teams just going to get to 2 0 and cruise? Because that seemed like the order at the moment is just like, try and not exert too much energy. The performances don't matter anymore. All that matters are three points and just like stop playing once you have a lead kind of thing. Um, but the counter argument, of course, with Holland, as is always, if they're up 2 0, he probably has a brace. So, yeah. And who cares? I mean, with Palmer, is can they even go up 2 0? <laughs> right. You know, well, like we don't know. <laughs> they'll either go up or down 2 0, and then they'll either turn that into a 3 2 win or yeah. a 3 2 loss. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. know what the hell, but. You don't like Mo at all, though? No, I do. I, I th- yeah. That's why I listed him. He's definitely on the list. The thing with Mo, to me, I, did you watch the game today at all? I watched like 40 minutes of it. I mean, he just does not look like himself and hasn't really, I think, in a long time. I mean, a while ago now, a game of 25, he subbed on for the injury and against Brentham, came on. That looks like old school Mo, and then he got re-injured in that game. And since then, I don't think he's had a good performance, really. I mean, you could argue that Brighton, you know, he got a million shots up, but most of them were just kind of like pot shots, sort of yeah. like today, where he, yeah, he just was had, playing pretty wide too. Yeah, today. today he just had three pot shots. He created a couple moments that were like nice passes, but he kind of just had three like I'm going for a worldy curler moments, and then yeah. he gets subbed on 59, unheard yeah. of, unheard yeah. of for like fit and firing mode to get subbed. I, in a one-one game at yep. that point, yeah. So I'm just like I'm not sure that it's he's he's firing on all cylinders right now, and you know form usually doesn't matter with a player like Mo. You just you know you just back him because you know it'll come eventually. But it it it's there. It's in, it's yeah. in my head for sure. Whether I should ignore yeah. it or not, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, no, it's very. It's not a. Uh, point of contention that he's out of form it's more yeah. like he's going to be in form if he braces against Man United yeah right <laughs> and you know <laughs> the he form might turn does, yeah. after eight minutes into the match and then he's in and, form I mean he did have the longest injury layoff of his Liverpool career yeah after getting re-injured you know from the half he played at Brenham so I to me it's more of like no matter what, we're going to back the team that he's playing 60 because we want him to play 90 against Man United. Yeah. And yeah. we're going to get over the line because we're still playing these at home. And it, and that's what happened, which like to me, it was like a little less concerning. I, I don't know. I would put Mo behind the city guy for captain. I would put him ahead of Palmer. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I yeah. mean, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, oh, but, you know, Man United is, has gotten two results against Liverpool this season. But I mean, if you if you want to project the game for from a fantasy perspective. I mean, you have to look at the fact that Liverpool are just getting between 20 and 30 shots in both of those games, you know, well over 2xG in both those games. You know, you have to factor that stuff in, whereas, yeah. you know, the results didn't go that way. But 
the numbers were similar to like the seven nil numbers. The ball just didn't go in the net. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like it was the same kind of performance. The ball just didn't go in the net. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's possible is that that kind of crooked score line is very possible. You watch Man United today. I mean, they're a complete yeah, fucking they're joke. joke. They're an Complete, absolute, absolute shambolic joke. joke of a team, and, like, and they've been this way for months. No, Ten Hag, I mean, even the <laughs> United insane. people that, I mean, like Keith and Aaron, who I've had both of them on this pod before for Firesides, they're so far out on Ten Hag. And they, a year ago, right now, they were so in on Ten Hag. They were yeah. like, there's this thing, this thing. He's doing well. He's building, blah, blah, blah. They're fucking done with him. Every every moment is just another moment for them to like shit on him. But his mother's probably out on him. Oh I mean, my come God. on. Yeah, no, it's he's every a, week is a new storyline of how our man United fucking themselves upside their asses. And it's, it's crazy. They, he astounds. It's, it's just theater at this point. It's crazy. And you know, like to be fair on the other side of things, I mean, man United are going to cause problems countering. Because that's the mm. one thing they're good at, especially through Garnacho, right? Yeah, Are I they? mean that—that's all they can do is that. It's just like a long ball out to Garnacho or Rashford, who then puts another cross in. And I mean, I'm not saying that they're not going to do that, but are yeah. they going to actually trouble, or is this even going to be a game? I mean, to me, the answer is I think no. Both things can be true. Like I. We'll see. I Basically, I expect them to score, but it might be in a 5 1 loss, you know, or like it might it, be Bradley. Yeah, or it might be Bradley. Shout out to Bradley. Shout good out to by me him. not having Bradley. Also, good what job by fucking, him. Yeah, I know. It's, just, yeah. it's like, I'm sure you like, get rid of Virgil, get rid of Bradley. It's like, Dodge yes. a bunch of bullets. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. That's a basket case. But I mean, one I did want to talk about is, I mean, we've kind of a recurring theme this season is just Spurs, Spursing. Like, I mean, what? What is there to make of this, you know, incompetent performance on a long list of incompetent performances from Spurs when they, you know, are in a pretty tight, you know, mini league two team battle with Villa and they just let, laid an egg. I mean, they were just, yeah. they, were, they were just awful, right? West, West Ham were probably just better. I yeah, mean, better, just better, strictly you better. Know, they, yeah. they got the Brennan tap in, like what what minute was that? Like Early fifth minute or something? Yeah. And then like and then from that moment on, like West Ham were definitely the better team. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was Cameo's question too. Spurs have been kind of weird past few matches. Any change in your read of their assets? I mean, I think like notably the one big difference in this performance was like Sun was horrible. Yeah. Like Brennan played his normal game. Timo played his normal game. You know, Udogs was fine. Poro was fine. Center backs were mostly fine. Sun was fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he offered shoot. nothing. He wouldn't shoot. Yeah, he it's was just killing like, attacks like he was playing for the other team. It was really crazy. He struggled yeah. to get in the game. I thought even Maddo was better than him, and Maddo's been bad for like months. Yeah. Um, I mean, he keeps subbing Maddo after an hour. I mean, that tells you where he thinks his game's at. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm happy I dodged the Maddo bullet, sort of. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the other factor is just if you look at the scores from Game Week 31, I mean, there's a lot of teams on like two days rest who just played really badly. Ran That's out fair. of legs, couldn't yeah. press after 50 minutes, and Spurs are one of them. You know, I mean, they sure. that game just died. Like, I, that game was really exciting for like 45 to 60 ish minutes. And then, like, by the end, everyone in Discord was just like, well, this game is fucking dog shit. Like, I can't I mean, even yeah. watch this anymore. I'm a little bit more alarmed than just chalking this up to two days off. Like, couldn't, pr- I mean, they. I mean, it's not, they're playing West Ham. They don't have to press much. I mean, West Ham just sit back in their own fucking half. And he has a yeah. fully fit squad for the first time, yeah. you know, in a while, the last couple of weeks. And, I mean, they just couldn't break them down. They couldn't create a yeah. chance, couldn't break them down. And, you know, this is recurring theme, you know, I mean, where, you know, especially I've been, I think, a lot more vocal or louder than you on this front of them, you know, the lack of chance creativity from them just as a in a whole totality of the season kind of accumulation from what I've seen. I mean... It's a lot of feel good stories, but it reminds me a lot of like Newcastle last year winning a lot of one goal games, or you know, there's like that NFL Late team winners. that goes six and one in one possession games, yeah, like one yeah. score games, where I'm just like, so many things have broken so perfect for Ange, and he's in this spot, which is okay. And they've had some issues with injuries, obviously, but yeah, also, yeah. 
you know, if thing if some of these coin flips or things broke a little bit differently, they're just in like eighth. And we're just I like, know. oh, if like they're actually and the bad. Narrative, <laughs> the, yeah, narrative the narrative is so would be buoyant so, on them and it feels it's very crazy. unearned. Like I feel yeah. like there are so many cracks in the armor that are being papered over due down to like kind of extraneous circumstances or something. I don't know I exactly how to articulate it. I don't know. I'm just kind of worried. I mean, I'm still happy to just have Son, I think, because yeah. he got he has pens and you know they have some doubles and you know, you're sort of trapped, but like I probably want to bench him against Arsenal at home, you know, like Yeah. I mean the the weird the thing the like positive take I guess about, you know, just this performance in a nutshell is I mean it's tied with Everton away where they scored two goals for their lowest XG in open play since the first game of December. You know, so they're still like putting up numbers. Is it elite? Like no, but is it good above average? Like definitely yes yeah. in terms of their attack and their goals. Yeah, so I'm with you. It's like Sun still good, you know, still going to start every game whether left wing, whether striker, still on pens, yada yada yada, but yeah, I don't I, I don't know what to make of it. it. It's not, it's also just awkward timing, right? Cause we're talking about a team that has like home NFO, which is like, okay. Away Newcastle, which is good. And then a blank and then Arsenal before they go on a run of doubles. And we're probably all going to like try and get a bunch of their players in that run. But right now it's like even Sun. I mean, totally fine to not own him, right? I mean, yeah. most teams are probably getting rid of him in 34. For, for a doubler, then not buying him back for 35, and then maybe buying him back in 36. And I I just don't feel like he's going to kill you right now. I don't think that it's a little bit... I think Newcastle is also a good comp because there was a long stretch of last season where they were just murdering teams on the break, and everyone was playing them as if they're just like 17th place Newcastle. And just like letting them counter in space and they would just rip teams apart. And I think a lot of that happened also early in this season with Spurs, where it was just like teams just kind of like weren't ready for the drastic change in play. And they would just score three or five or four and just fucking murder a team. And maybe we're at this point in the season where teams are just like, nah, you know, like the back post free run just isn't there. You know, like Sun on the break, not there. Two center backs up his ass all game. And maybe teams are adjusting a little bit to Ange style. Um, yeah. Because the thing with Ange style that West Ham, I think, did a good job of exploiting is like, you don't need players cherry picking to get chances. Like, you really just need one or two guys who are outlets and you'll get chances. That's all yeah. you need. Because yeah, they're happy, Spurs are happy to play like two on two in, in their own half all game. Um, so if you park a double decker, it's it's hard to do the Ange stuff. And I think like I think Maddo early in the season also was creating a lot of chances in open play and looked like okay, get the ball to Maddo in that sort of ten spot and let him yeah, cook. Play and, one one twos to break the line was happening. And when's the last time that happened? I mean, he, yeah. he I don't know what happened to him or what happened to the space. Maybe the space isn't there anymore. But yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, it, it's, it's a weird one. Yeah, and it's also, to me, you know, is I feel like he's... Look, some players are just not playing so well anymore. Yeah. It's difficult to because based on the style and some of the players they have, in my head, I'm like, this should be working a lot better than it is, which is sort of a... He's like sort of a victim to his own circumstance because if you just yeah. look at their table position and, you know, their points, it's like, oh, yeah, for Spurs, that's very adequate. Like, that's job done. And it leaves me wanting more where it like based on the style, I feel like he should be getting more out of some individuals and or mixing and matching to find better balance than he has done so far. And I guess I've just been frustrated by that. Yeah. And I think that like also, like you're saying, victim of his own success a little bit here is we're saying you're saying that now. But if I told you in preseason that like Brennan Johnson and Timo Werner are going to start every game and like Rich is going to play 2000 minutes at striker. We wouldn't be like, wow, what a fucking amazing squad. We would have been like, oh, man, Spurs are kind of fucked, you know? So, like, I think he's done an incredible job getting the most out of Timo and getting the most out of BJ, who are two players that I did 
didn't think could have had this good of seasons, you know, in September, August, September. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're stumbling a little bit now. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I guess going back to the sun, you know, I mean, replacing him isn't trivial because there aren't, you know, 12 yeah. mids that are like, oh my God, I'd be so happy to have any of these. It's probably like Diaz or Foden yeah, for like, everyone who just got rid of Foden, right? Yeah, it would be looking at a downgrade price-wise. I mean, I don't know if that's a downgrade in FPL player terms right now, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess so. It's just you're, you, you know, like you're using, you're snip snapping a spot, you know, when there are doubles all over the place and they're going to have more and, you, you know, you'll want him back probably for the... End of You're the definitely going to want him back in 36, I think. I think skipping the Arsenal fixture will be like chalk. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at a player with doubles who you expect to start every double, that's why I use Diaz as an example. I think he's, sure. a, he's a good example. I mean, he has two more fixtures and, uh, you know, doesn't play someone as hard as Arsenal in yeah. the next four game weeks. And that that feels like automatic, right? Like that is like, yeah. how is he not going to outscore Son yeah. in the next four game yeah. weeks? Um, yeah, I'm or Foden yeah. or someone. I mean, I would... Yeah, Foden has three more. I mean, one yeah. more fixture. Yeah. I would probably, depending on your team, though, just still rather hold him for the next two rather than getting rid of him right now and just maybe you get rid for 34 with a plan to get back at 36. Yeah, listen, I don't think it's urgent at all. I'm very yeah. happy to keep him, but, yeah. you know, there's... there's it's, it's the fun part of the season where you can, like, sort of... Everyone's kind of a punt because there's so few games left, you know? Sure. So if you're really feeling like you want to upgrade somewhere else and you need the money and son to Foden or son to Diaz is the only way to afford it. Like totally fine with that. Yeah. Just do it. I, yeah. I don't think that'll kill you. Yeah. One thing they do have going for them though, is no Europe in this moment when, you know, yeah. Champions League is back next week. So, and all the, Europe, yeah. I mean, the conference championship league and the Europa, all the things are all back. So, you know, when you do look at the list of teams that are participating in all those competitions, it's not one or two. I mean, there's like fucking, you know, there's like five teams six or six or teams or so. Yeah, yeah, there's like a bunch of teams still playing. So I guess Brighton are knocked out, Man United yeah. and Newcastle are all knocked out, Villa but the rest are, are all still in. Yeah, yeah, Villa, Villa Arsenal, Arsenal, Western City, Western Liverpool. Yeah, the five. So, you know, and it's really. I mean, the fear. If I was, if I was a seller, which is not in my plans at all, I would be so scared of that Newcastle fixture. Yep. More than home NFO oh, this yeah. week. Home NFO, I'm like, he might get a goal. Yeah. But that Newcastle fixture, man, I mean, yeah. he could fucking hat trick. And everyone yeah. would just be like, man, Newcastle suck. Yeah. <laughs> it well, wouldn't be a surprise at all. Yep. A common refrain the last couple common, months, huh? Very common. Very oh my common. God. It's going to be so good. The managerial Black Monday or whatever that day is when fucking Edward gets shithouse can and Tyndall. Oh my God. And then I get to make a clip of the preseason or postmortem day, whenever you talk about day that. On the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, the timestamp. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, some yeah. more receipts. I can't wait yeah. to cash receipts. Yeah. 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 Um, what else should we talk about here? Um, I mean, the inevitability of Palmer is almost hilarious at this point. Like to even need to discuss it is maybe just a, a, a pantomime. We could Dude, probably he skip has that. Eight pen dongs this year. He's only been on pens for like half the year as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he started in like game week five or something. I want to say his and first Holland... start was game week seven. So Holland last year had seven pendongs. Palmer's already on eight, which is the most for a player. I'm just looking really quick. Since Bruno in 2020 yeah, that season. year. And he's probably going to fucking pass it. <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> it's crazy, like, he, dude. It's Chelsea have 11, which is also the most since the Leicester that season. And How do they win so many pens? Pens. They're wow. they're in like tenth. <laughs> they suck. They're fucking terrible. They're, they're one a bad of the team. worst teams. Yeah, and it's just I, I don't know. Yeah, his I mean, returns twenty to be fifteen fair, thirteen in the last three. What the fuck? Raz has won more pens than any player in the history of the Premier League. Is that true? And then it's actually true. Oh my and god! Then, and then Mudrick is just yeah. that's all he can do. He just falls down. <laughs> all he does is like run by someone and then fall down. Maybe there's contact, maybe not contact. I don't know. And then they just have some other random penguins. I don't even know what happened, but yeah, like the Matuweke one today. I mean, Dallow just, Dallo just fell and then he just decided on the way down, like you're coming down with me. 
I mean that that's it. That's all that happened. He He's fell. Like, and I just, just re- walked on the field, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he just like, reaches his hand out and it's like, no, 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 I'm yeah. not going out like this. It's and, like dragging him to the depths of the. Like yeah. you're drowning with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the playing Davy that. Jones this is Manchester locker. United desperation grab, and I don't know, dude. I don't know how they have so many pens. Potch just absolute tactical genius to get all these pens. Uh, <laughs> it's the only way to explain yeah. it, I think. <laughs> And then, yeah, you mentioned the Arsenal or the 2 0 of teams just like, I mean. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, we we had a question, I think. It was just um, who are, Bear said, who are the top Arsenal assets the rest of the season? Who are the top City assets the rest of the season? But yeah, I mean, it did stick out to me that Arsenal game, right? I mean, obviously they rotated a lot and had injuries. So it was a really weird team, but. And they just basically stopped playing. I mean, it was funny seeing people on in Discord and shit be like, oh, this, this is getting a little nervy, even though it shouldn't be. Just, But that was only because Arsenal stopped playing. It wasn't because Luton were getting chances. There was just, no, just nothing happened in that game from like 40 minutes to 90 minutes, basically. The Arsenal was just like, the game is over and no one's going to play anymore. Yeah, yeah which... I wonder if we'll keep seeing that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think the game next weekend in between Champions League could be a little bit like that, depending on how the first leg yeah. goes for some of the teams. Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought it was a really mature performance from Arsenal. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm. That's what you should you do, should do at yeah. this point in the season. But for FPL, it's not necessarily what well, we want them to do. It certainly is what you want them to do if you have their defenders. It's the best thing ever if you have their defenders. It's this is what City defenders used to be. Yeah. Well, remember when City used to just get twenty-one cleans every year, and it was yeah. just like, oh my god, they just no one can even touch the ball, and it's just a joke. Well, the City game, I mean, they had, Diash had his typical moment of madness that he does every game because he's a bad player, where he just goes to sleep instead of just tracking a man in the box like a center back typically yeah. does. But they had a similar stranglehold on that game. I mean, that yeah, was they even did. I th- that I was thought even Ortega more drastic. also could have saved that. I mean, yeah. that's a ridiculous angle yeah. to score from. But, but I mean, that yeah, no, I think I take was your a, point. Yeah, similarly yeah. drastic stranglehold on the game and, you know, easing to very comfortable victory yeah um but you know yeah to me it's like defenders look good i mean i guess that arsenal aren't going to be playing a suddenly bad luton team um anymore you know their fixtures are a lot of you know upper mid table type teams like brighton brighton villa wolves chelsea spurs bournemouth man united everton is the arsenal I think all those teams around. except Everton have a annoying goal in them. They yeah. really do. Yeah. Just like do. a dumbass counter that yeah. in a loss. Except for Bournemouth at home will be an easy one. But other than right, that, right, yeah. Right. Um so you know, I definitely like the defense and good job Saka, by you. Triple Saka's... Arsenal defense and to double city defense for Team Walsh over yeah, there. Yeah, well we'll see how it ends up. But I mean Saka's concerning, I think, right? I mean he yeah. clearly yeah. Not in squad. Subbed early for the City game. That's not a precaution. It's because he was fucking hurt. Not yeah. in the squad. You know, it's like dicey to not have him because I think, you know, you look at his ownership and you think, oh God, like, am I going to risk that? And, and also, doubles. yeah, he has doubles. And also, you know, the fruit of that can bear, you know, extreme suck succulent fruits. Because. <laughs> 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 like he could just go on a run where he's you know pedestrian winger you know which we've seen or, him and, and they don't su- get a pen and subbed every game also I think is a real possibility right he's so by by so much their best attacker yep so like if they're winning in any of these games and you have the opportunity to sub him you should take that opportunity every time right so that that's something definitely in my head too I mean between Sokka and Sun though who would you rather get rid of. Right, Sokka. Sokka has a double when Sun is a blank. Yeah, I would rather get rid of Sokka, I think. Really? Even yeah. with the two more fixtures? Two yeah, additional I mean, I fixtures? Think, look, Sun is playing striker until further notice and has better fixtures, and I know he's playing. He's, <laughs> I playing, know he's playing 90 in them. every game. Yeah, I yeah. know he's playing 90 minutes. Well, we don't know that necessarily. Well, because Andrew's a fucking fat fraud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean I, I prefer that. And I also look at Odegaard and, and Kai and I'm like 
that's, you know, I mean, this is back to almost like what we talked about God. a few episodes ago, where it's like, if you're not that, like, Sokka's the overwhelmingly owned player compared to these two, and it's, you know, okay, it's probably like 55-45, like Sokka's a better asset. That's not yeah. enough to not, in my view, take the, the smaller... The chance, yeah. The chance, like, because the, the benefit outweighs the risk too, by too much to me when it's, cl- yeah. it's too close. It's not overwhelming that I'm like, oh, yeah, well, Sock is just so much better. Like, that's stupid. You know, you're going to... When you see Kai just, you know, return every Returning game. Returning every look game. look like he will continue to do so, you know, in this new, more prominent role. And he's playing striker. The real annoyance for me, as is always my annoyance with FPL, is pens. Always comes back to pens. So I agree with literally everything you're saying. And if Arsenal get two pens in the next four games, you're really fucking dumb and you should have had Sokka. And that's just like the fact. I mean, there was, I was, I have like a, I'm the king of, you know, I had a random shower thought, but I didn't flush it out and I'm not going to do anything with the shower thought. But I was looking at at non-penalty XG per shot. So basically, who's getting the biggest chances per shot on each team? Okay. And Arsenal, it's not even remotely close that it's, it's Kai. Kai. Yeah. yeah, like no one is near Kai. Yeah. The that next backup. highest non-pen per shot is Gabrielle. Oh god. Next after yeah, that, that is Tross, and then Jesus, and then Inketia, and then Marnelli, and then Saka. Backs it up. Yeah. I mean that backs but up watching pens. them a lot. But Pence, yeah. Saka has like four pens this year, so he That's has it. this many points. Sure. Yep. Yep. So yeah, it's you annoying. know, you have to yeah, you have to be looking you have to be willing to try that gamble of dodging the pen, you know, yeah. and yeah, that's and that's maybe he won't be on the pitch. You know that that's also like a possibility sure. now. Or maybe he'll just run. give it to one of his friends. Maybe he'll just give Kai's it to a friend. friend. Yeah. He's done it before. Just on this He's on this before. note, the other like interesting one. I think most most people could guess who's the top of their team for non penalty sure. per shot. I'm sure the other interesting one is Brennan. I mean, BJ? yeah, BJ, like just way ahead of everyone yeah. on Spurs. Way ahead. Yeah. Just yeah, at, every tracks. every shot he takes is a one in five chance of going in. He's just getting yeah. massive chances with every shot. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, he's he gets, with his pace, he gets he frees himself. Like, Sun's taking shots with traffic in front of him. They just yep. all get blocked, basically. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, John, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's kind that's of interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, and then Bear, yeah, the other part of Bear's question is who are the top city assets, which, you know, I don't really change my feelings at all about Holland that he got rested for one game. I mean, he Foden. probably got rested for about one game last year in the same We have to run. talk about Foden here for a few minutes? Yeah, Foden is just... He's killing us, man. <laughs> He's killing us. In I mean, way, I had him in... for his last hat-trick game, but... I transferred him out that week. That week, The week yeah. of his last hat-trick. And then yeah. he went on a 3-2-3 and it was like, okay, yeah, I'm fine. And then he went on an 11-15, not fine. And then he went 2-3, fine. And then he went with a 20 pointer. I mean, he's killing us in like sort of abnormal ways. <laughs> it's, it's so bizarre because, you know, just you look ha- at your hauls. Just huge yeah. hauls. Like you look at his his game log here and right, you he's blank he blanks more than he returns. Yeah. But when he returns, when he it's returns. like, oh shit, it's so many points. Yeah. It's not just once. <laughs> and if it is, you know, I mean he got the max bones in the Bournemouth game. That was a little bit of an odd one. You know, the yeah. one nail he got eleven yeah. with the clean that's but, you know, he's a hat trick, a brace, and a hat trick in the games he returns. And it's just. It's also weird because game weeks one through 19, he only had one return in every one of his games. He did not yeah. have a single double return. Yeah. And then 19 through now, I mean, he has two single return games and he has one, two, three, four multi-return games. So I don't know what to make of that. Like, I don't... This is very, very weird territory of a player who's just so explosive, but also simultaneously, like, not capable because he's probably going to blank. He just might also get 20 points. (laughs) That's that's his range. I guess it's more... Yeah, his range is very wide. I guess it's more of... He's like Raz on... City Raz. 
where it's just like you're you're never capping him over like Coon or something, but he might get a twenty pointer. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's it's a lot less than that because with at least with Raz in those mo- in that in those couple years, he was so obviously centrally involved to like everything. Yeah, yeah. And Foden just has games where he just floats in his peripheral and has a shot here or there, right. you know, has a side pass here or there, but yeah. doesn't do anything. Yeah. And then he has these games like this one against Villa where he just scores a world, he cuts them apart on another play. And just <laughs> yeah. it's just like what is happening? Yeah. You know, where it's yeah. it's so unpredictable. And we've talked about him more of as a coverage pick. And I really still believe that. Like I feel like he is a coverage pick. Yeah, I, I and mean, he's a good pick, and he's a bad pick, and he does my head in. Like, and I don't he has even the know. most points of any midfielder in the game. He um, plays every. I mean, he's nailed. He's yeah, just nailed he has the most points of anyone monster. in the game except Ollie. Like that's crazy yeah. that the list goes Ollie and then Foden for the top yeah. two scorers in FPL this season is yeah. fucking mental. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, getting rid of him will go down as a huge mistake on both of our parts. Obviously, should have held him. Massive hauls up the ass. Don't really know if I have a lesson to learn here other than the fact that like a nailed city asset is what we've dreamed of for the last decade and it never comes. And we actually had a rare nailed that city asset and we both got rid of him. It's so you know what though the, the story has not been finished or being written. Yeah, maybe Kevin it's gonna will. blank forever. Kevin will Come out on top here. I mean, I went Kevin over Foden. Of course you did. And it's so did been, I. that's been a minus fifty it's pointer. It's minus a couple. Hey, you know what? It's not game week thirty eight yet. So, it's not over yet. You know, and we guess got... what? Kevin might start the next game. So that's big. You you get him for the might starts. You don't get him for the points. No, no. You captain him for the might starts. You captain him for the might starts. <laughs> <laughs> Against your team, breaking your own rule. Kevin! But the thing, though, rules that, are meant to be broken. The thing I'm worried about with City in Kevin that game is, is the Glasner quote, right? Because Glasner has broken sure down won. football in a way that he knows yeah. how to shut City down because if you don't score a goal, you can't win. Therefore, if City don't score a goal, they can't win. Yeah. He knows the fact that he knows that is frightening. Yeah. <laughs> for my city assets. <laughs> you just imagine Glasner and, and Pep sitting down for like their red glass oh, of red wine together. Awesome. And Glasner's like, hey, Pep, you ever you ever think about this one? You ever break <laughs> it down this, like this? <laughs> run this let me run something <laughs> by you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just texting yeah. Arteta on the side. He's like, Oh my god, you you wouldn't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Um, yeah. yeah, so who are the top city assets? I mean Foden, Holland, Defenders. Defender. Yeah. I mean Gvardiol I'm pretty happy with. I mean yeah. just from a sheer standpoint of he Plays. spams in such bullshit all the time that one of it there something's gonna connect. Something that they'll connect and averages. he'll he'll get a random bones for unsuccessful crosses here and there, yeah. I'm sure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll run into a clean eventually, right? I mean yeah. you would think. Dude, I yeah, I mean, I'm I think that they're gonna start hauling ass with cleans. I'm feeling the city cleans. Yeah, yeah, it might happen. Yeah. It might not, yeah. and it might. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And then, yeah, I mean, there's what else? We just got just here? a Anything few else? other questions. And Rafi said, "Is there any point in holding Tony aside from masochism?" I mean, I responded to him. The other reason to hold Tony is if you're in debt collection, like Walsh. But is there a th- is there a third reason? Because I don't think so. I can't come up with three. Well, the fixtures are a reason. I mean, granted, Brenham are among the worst teams in the league and maybe don't have a good fixture, but they play similarly bad Brenham-ish teams. I mean, it's really disconcerting still that Bumo's not starting. I was very, what the hell very is that? Su- I don't know. I was very surprised that he didn't start. Shocked. So, I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been with so the, long. Yeah, and as much as we do extol Wissa's virtues and like him, he's really not a good compliment for Tony, like, at all. He just is absolutely not. I mean, my theory has always been they bought him a year too early because they are a smart team who planned on selling Tony, and then Wissa was going to come in and, and do the things, and then Tony fucking gets banned for six months, and now they just have both. 
But the the weird also thing with Bumbo not starting is that the rumors before kickoff were Tony pulled up in warm up, Bumo's coming in for him. And that came from the Brentford account. So if that's true, that means he's fit enough to start. And then he plays 15 minutes. And then he doesn't play. Yeah. He's eight. While they so, can't, uh, while they get battered. Yeah. Like they got fucking battered in this yeah. game. They, 24 to five shots. Yeah. Like the nil nil is, it should have been nil to negative six or something. Like they should not have <laughs> walked away with anything in this game. Yeah. But, so I don't know. I don't get what's going on there at all. Yeah. I, I mean, Maybe is like there's well he's definitely not able to start on two days rest and we want him for the Villa game instead or something I yeah, I, I don't know maybe but ultimately I think that is a reason to be optimistic a little bit because yeah they haven't had Tony and Bumo playing together all year they haven't played together right? one they, they haven't, haven't started, started together game. one game yeah yeah crazy so we know how damaging they both are when that is happening and we saw Bumo playing the best of his career earlier this season yeah, so yeah you know That's look fair. the taxes and the debt will be collected <laughs> and as I was saying with the Tony or with the uh, Foden v Kevin it's not Game Week 38 yet so yep. Tony will the stories repay. are not finished yet he will repay he is an honest man and he yep. repays his debts. Yeah. So we have a handful of games left here to go. Tony will finish strong. Tony will finish strong. I believe it. He will. He X50 will. said, is Garnacho a top five midfielder? That is shocking. That question is shocking. He means in FPL. Who he says that? Mean in, he doesn't mean in real life. I mean, I don't care what the meaning X50. is. X50. Fuck, man. I mean, if it's in the denture game, then yeah, he's top of the charts. Yeah, I mean, the no, question is, I mean, is he a top five not. midfielder? It's, is he a top eight attacker? No. No. I mean, sorry, top seven. But is he the best eighth attacker? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's sure. great. He's fucking cheap and he is really good and he'll get returns. You know, I'm sure a lot of people got him auto sub this week. That's his yeah. role. That's his best role for your team. Yeah, um, agree. Yeah. Agree with yeah. that. Agree with that. Uh, and then the last two are a couple of Liverpool questions. I mean, Brian said, "I don't, I don't even want to talk about this." He said, "Sounds like Jota, Allison, Trent will be back for game week 34." I have two Liverpool at the moment. Who are the top three Liverpool assets to have? I mean, dude, I'll believe it when I see it. We these guys haven't been on a bench yet. They're not in training yet. You know, like I don't really want to play the game of like, can we look three three game weeks in advance right now and, and project like who's going to be fit and who's not going to be fit by then. So, you know, I, I don't yeah. think we need to address that. But then Bolter said, I'm very, very Mac question. I, sorry, very Mac Alistair curious for the double in form right now on set pieces, lurking in the areas on the edge of the box to get good shots. His last six, three goals, four assists. I don't know. He was, he was on my short list of guys I might bring in. Um, I mean, his return today could not have been more lucky, right? Worldly. I mean, he was playing six the whole Worldly. game, and he, yeah, of course, he's going to join in. I mean, it was like a very Doug Louise, like, what yeah, the fuck? You know, worldly. it wasn't com yeah. it wasn't commensurate with his performance in terms of like his FPL positioning, and yeah, yeah, likelihood yeah. of returning points. He wasn't involved in the game at all, and it's it is concerning to have someone like that where his FPL ness is completely rel relative to is like endo playing. <laughs> that, like, that's a, that's exactly like word for word what I was going to say. The correlation yeah. of if is endo playing or not playing means he's a maybe interesting asset to like he's one of the worst picks yeah. in the in in that you yeah. could be starting week to week. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. you know I expect endo to be fit for the next game. Might not, you know, yeah. so we don't know. So therefore we don't know if he's a pick or not. But you know, if we if we're rolling into the double period and you know Endo's back and they're starting every game and Max in the eight every game, like yeah, you you could do yeah. worse for he's sure. Five nine, it's cheap. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's it'll be interesting to see what how Liverpool set up next year, but you know, he's certainly look. He's so they bought, so they bought good. the right Brighton mid. Let's just put it that. Yeah, way. he like, is. He has come so into his good. own to a level that you know even you know we were both very bullish on this buy for Liverpool. Yeah, especially and, for the know, price. Yeah, the price was right. And, you know, I mean, you know, I've obviously I've criticized McAllister in the past when I've had him in FPL and he just does nothing for months. But also, you know, he's so obviously 
an incredible midfielder, an incredible player. So he's, he's unbelievable. Just settling, flourishing, all the things. I mean, he's routinely among the man of the match candidates, no yeah. matter what role he's being asked to do in midfield. And yeah, you could do worse. You know, he's five yeah. nine. Like he could be one where it's just like I only have six four for the pick, and like yeah, he's gonna play two games. Maybe he's more reserved in one and the was a little more advanced in the other, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's perfectly okay. Yeah, I mean, right? my, my, I don't know, thesis for this episode really is just like, you know, unless you're fucking cat fink and Jack bones and you're OR seven in the world, then like ignore this part. But for every one of us mortals, i it's just a punt from here on out. There's very few games left. Anyone in the world can get hot for fucking six game weeks. Miggy Almiron could score in every single game from here on out. And everyone oh, would just be like, oh, he got hot for six, six weeks. I'm, I'm serious, though. Uh, Anyone could do you? that. Yeah. Almiron. And so, you know, if you're feeling it, you know, you're feeling it. I mean, dude, you could buy Bruin Larson right now and he could just go on a run of double digit hauls. Right. He literally you're has getting, two double getting, digit hauls in the last this is, this three is game weeks. This is to wrap it up. You're getting I'm just saying, everyone's a punt. So you should just. Bruin Lars? I'm not shouting for Larson. I'm saying I'm you're shouting just, just anyone. No, I use him as an example. <laughs> I use him as an example because anyone <laughs> profit buy who your gut is telling you to buy is what I'm trying to say. You know, yeah, like yeah, Bolter's yeah. whole question was basically, "I'm feeling Mac right now." Well, just fucking get him. Fucking dude. buy him. Stop just complaining. Buy him. No, you know that's that, not that's a complaint. A, not yeah. a complaint. Not Bolter's a, a good guy, but you know, no, I love I mean. Bolter, but yeah, 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 yeah. By what the are you guy doing? You're feeling, yeah, before we wrap, what are you doing with your team? I mean, I'm the easiest save rolling? ever. I don't even know how I'm ever going to use a transfer. My team is just your team is just beautifully too good. set up. It's beautifully set up. I have my receipts, cash, cash players like Tony, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my other just good picks. I have everything covered, wild card. It's just beautiful here. So I'm chilling. I am fucking chilling. I'll week. probably save unless something comes out with like Sokka is actually yeah. hurt and missing again. Then maybe I'll make a move there. But yeah. otherwise, save my team's looks. good to go. Yeah, yeah, you look like you're in good shape to save. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um. Okay, dude. All right, doggy. I think that is that was a good one. Basically, a pod. Good one. So by we have you. stream. We have stream tomorrow morning. Stream tomorrow. Okay. And then back. I think we're normal schedule for most of the rest of the season. Yeah. I believe that is the accurate yeah. and the God's Saturday honest. kickoffs, fucking thank Rest God. Of the week. Let's Rest go. Of the season. Rest so, of the well, season, we have some so. doubles, but we'll figure yeah, that doubles out. will just. Well, we don't have to do like change our pod schedule. Just yeah. you know, something to so take our, into account. We will. Our next pod will be normal Monday. Normal Monday. All right, All right. brother. Well, Any well, last words? See you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Check us out at fmlfield.com. Follow us on Twitter. Fmlfield Sports. Be sure to come slash fmlfield. Subscribe. Rate. Review. Cheers.